So take a Polizio action thriller, throw in a chunk of Italian comedy, mix in with a liberal amount of giallo tropes, and you have... They're coming to get you, Barbara. Keep repeating. It's only a movie. 1975's Suspicious Death of a Minor came at the end of an incredible run of successful giallo for director Sergio Martino. He had started the 70s with the 70s classic Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward. He'd followed up with The Case of the Scorpion's Tail, Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key, more of which later today, All the Colours of the Dark, always good to have a bit of Satanism mixed in with your giallo, and the previous year's Torso. This was the most atypical of Martino's Gialli. It is more a Polizio movie than a Gialli. More with giallo overtones. There is a killer replete with mirrored sunglasses who takes on the role of the black glove wearing murderer. This giallo dipped police movie wears its influences clearly on display. Our hero, Paolo Germi, is an undercover cop that doesn't play by the rules. He is not a 21st century hero doing an ongoing risk assessment of his activities. Germi is played by Claudio Casanelli and is a fine, mean and moody anti-hero. Germi's main ongoing character trait, other than an ability to pull out his gun and fire it at people indiscriminately, is that he wears steel room glasses throughout the movie, which breaks numerous times. He clearly should have gone to Specsavers. That's Specsavers. And no, of course I'm not looking for sponsorship. The eponymous suspicious death of a minor takes place early on in the proceedings. This first kill is economical, uh, classic, yellow with a slash across the throat. Really great use of light as the killer comes in and out of shot going back into the shadows. It's a very nice shot. Paolo is best summed up as one part Clint's Dirty Harry. One part Gene Hackman's Popeye Doyle. All right, Popeye's here. Get your hands on your heads. Get off the barn, get on the wall. And one part 1980s era Roger Moore James Bond. Oh, yes. Just mix this for 30 seconds and pour it over ice. What do you want for nothing? Rubber biscuit? Teaming up with Paolo is Adolfo Carusco's character Giannino, who's a pickpocket stroke petty thief getting by in the city. He's recruited by Paolo. He attempts to break the underage prostitution racket and a drugs trafficking operation. Since we clearly witnessed the murderer at the top of the movie, this is not a traditional who whodunit. We know who did it, however, the person who did it is essentially a hired hand, a hired killer. When the Mr. Big turns up, it is plainly obvious who he is. Argento's Deep Red, which came out in the same year, just a few months before this movie, appears to be a significant influence to this film. Luciano Miguelini's score certainly pays homage to Goblin's score for the earlier movie. The score here is very temperamental. We go from traditional, we then morph into Italian comedy circa 1970 that seems wildly inappropriate at times um, for a less European sensibility watching the film today. And then we have a good chunk of what appears to be very influenced by Goblin and their early to mid 70s prog rock. The soundtrack, if you can get hold of it, is certainly worth a listen, especially if you're a Goblin fan. There are other potential nods to Argento's films. Whilst there wasn't much time between Deep Red's release, and of course it was a bit of a phenomenon on its release in 1975, and this film's eventual release only a few months later, but this film was much lower budget and a much quicker turnaround. One parallel is with boiling water. With the boiling pan of water here, we are set up for a similar scene to Deep Red. And we're thinking that our 
plucky heroine may end up with their face in the water. Martino quite cleverly subverts that idea and changes the way the scene goes. There is a similar scene to uh, the famous shot in Deep Red where Hemmings is looking up at the window. However, don't let that take away from the film because this film has got a, a lot to offer. The first half of this film, after the initial murders, is quite light-hearted. We don't get to know an awful lot about Paolo. It's not even obvious from the beginning, spoiler alert, that he's a cop. However, if you're watching this, while I can't give too many spoilers away, clearly it's fairly integral to the plot that he is. However, it's not made implicit until a good way into the movie. In fact, after the scene I'm about to refer to. At the halfway point in this movie, no longer are we, are we having Jalo kills. No longer are we having nude or semi-nude young ladies. Now we have moved into the world of the car chase. Yes, there's a car chase. And it's a doozy. It's a comedic car chase. It's a car chase that appears to have absolutely no relevance or need to exist at this point in the 1970s. Italian films and cinemas would often have a first sequence, an interval, and a second sequence. When I started going to the cinema in the UK, way, way back in 1977, films were the same. Most of the early films I saw would have an intermission halfway through, which would be great for getting ice cream and snacks and popcorn and, well, King Cones. I used to quite like King Cones. I'm not sure if they still make them. If they still sell King Cones, tell me in the comments below. This scene seems set up to be the one that happens just before the intermission. It's difficult to imagine it isn't because the tone does shift after this. We have Giannino and Paolo in his car, which is a Citroen 2CV, uh, who are being chased by the cops. Yes, Paolo is indeed an undercover cop. However, they're not aware it's him in the car. So there is a chase through the city streets of Rome. It has actual car crashes and some very odd comedic sequences that would not be out of place in one of the more humorous Roger Moore James Bond films. This chase appears to take inspiration from previous movies as diverse as the first Pink Panther film. the car chase in the middle part of Argento's animal trilogy, Cat and Nine Tales. No. Looking at the car chase today, it's difficult to imagine that someone within the production team of a very famous series may not have seen this to our next action sequence that has one of the previously mentioned completely inappropriate pieces of music. The pair go to a fairground and decide uh, <laughs> to go on a roller coaster. Uh, yes, a roller coaster. Goon gets on the next car and there is a shootout on a roller coaster. The music is fairground? Bad Italian comedic fairground. Mm. becomes a darker, more determined character, pulling out his gun at a drop of a hat, uh, and not being above slapping around his characters, male and female, uh, in an attempt to get to the truth. The Killer with the Mirrored Sunglasses. That sounds like a yellow title by itself. The Killer with the Mirrored Sunglasses returns with a, a quite badly scarred face. We're not talking about the burning. <laughs> We're not getting to cropsy levels of burnt face, but he's he's not in a good way. He may have to put some makeup on before he goes on the next dating website. Our duo turn up to uh, a cinema, and the film that they're watching, although the credits are not shown, is Martino's earlier Jello. Your vice is a locked room, and only I have the key. 
there is a scene that takes place on the roof where the retractable roof starts to open above the cinema patrons as they're watching Martino's earlier movie. Which is something you don't see every day. But this is a great film. It has a couple of choices that, that just undercut it being as successful as it could have been. To be honest, how enjoyable you find this film is to a large degree going to be dependent on how much tolerance you have for intermittent 70s Italian comedy or at the very least how much you can just put them to one side and kind of forget they're there. This is a film that comes as close to being great as I've seen so far in my 31 Jolly for July. There are great moments, there are great sequences, there are some real what the moments. It's just not quite there. That said, I would rate this film as a strong 4 out of 5. If you get the chance, watch it. If you get the chance, buy it. Um, Arrow has got a great addition. It's remastered, it's gorgeous, it's got some wonderful special features on there and is well worth a purchase. If you can't buy it, rent it. This is a film to watch. This is a film to watch. And there's a lot, a lot to like in it, despite some flaws. That was Suspicious Death of a Minor. Are we on a roll? Let's hope so. Let's stick with Arrow for, coming soon, film number five. It is The Possessed. Or, as you can see, La Donna del Lago. Let's stick with The Possessed. The first black and white giallo that I will be reviewing. Possibly the only black and white giallo I will be reviewing. It's a proto giallo, and I don't want to give it away, but I have some things to say. Keep telling yourself, it's only a movie. It's only a movie. It's only a movie. No, I won't ever get bored of doing that. Till next time.